A man is driving a car with a woman and a girl in the back seat. The girl is struggling to breathe and they're rushing to the hospital. When they arrive, the man warns the woman to stay silent as they carry the girl inside. Nurses quickly take the girl for treatment while the woman watches anxiously from a window. The shifts to 20 years earlier to a family dinner with Don, Rini, and their daughters, Amy and Sarah. Sarah wants to attend a campfire party, but Don refuses since she didn't ask for permission, sending her to her room. Feeling rebellious, Sarah sneaks out to meet her motorcycle riding boyfriend, Chris, and head to a party, enjoying each other's company in the fields, where Chris plays guitar and professes his love, which Sarah reciprocates. Meanwhile, Rini tries to comfort Sarah at home, unaware she's not in her room. When an angry Don unlocks the door and finds she escaped through the window, he is furious. The next morning, Don waits by the front door as Sarah returns with Chris. She attempts to sneak in the back, but Don calmly tells her to come around to the front. As Sarah tries to enter, Don confronts her angrily, demanding to know when he permitted her to date. Later, Amy visits Sarah and they discuss their situation. Amy advises against arguing with Don, but Sarah insists he's unreasonable and needs to be challenged. Rini joins in, and Sarah shares her dream of moving to Florida and traveling the world when she turns 18. Don overhears them and begins to formulate a sinister plan, cleaning out a bomb shelter in the basement to lock Sarah inside and prevent her from leaving. Three months later, while Don trims the garden trees, Sarah is on the phone with Chris. Rini asks about Don, and Sarah tells her he's in the garden. After Rini leaves in her car, Don asks Sarah for help moving some things. Once she hangs up, he locks her in the basement and walks away, searches through a bucket and finds clothes and a flashlight. Desperate, she screams for help through the vent, but Don hears her and blocks it before leaving. Now trapped in a soundproof bomb shelter, night falls. Rini and Amy, thinking Sarah is with a friend, start to worry when she doesn't return or call. On day one, Sarah feels like a caged animal, using a pot for urination. The keypad allows only three attempts before disabling the lights and air circulation. By day four, Don, emphasizing that her current predicament is a direct result of her own choices and a lesson she should have heeded. Sarah pleads with him to release her, but he coldly states that it's beyond his willingness. He dictates that her access to essentials like air, food, and clothing is solely at his discretion with additional comforts, such as blankets and books, hitting her before committing horrific acts and then leaving. Rini contacts the authorities, voicing her belief that Sarah wouldn't just disappear and suggesting something bad may have happened. When Don arrives, he persuades the officer that Sarah left voluntarily, fabricating a story about her plans to travel across all 50 states when she turns 18. Rini counters Don's claims, explaining that these plans were just dreams and that Sarah wouldn't leave without saying goodbye, especially since she hasn't had her birthday yet. The officer acknowledges that once Sarah turns 18, she will have the right to leave, but admits that there are limited options for intervention in such cases. On the seventh day, Sarah, visibly marked by bruises and the aftermath of some form of violence, copes with her trauma by reminiscing about Chris and the night they shared. In her mind, a conversation unfolds. She confides in Chris about her intentions to depart once she reaches 18. Curious about Sarah's whereabouts, Chris queries Dawn and inquires if she has reached out to them. Deceptively, Dawn fabricates a story, alleging that Sarah has absconded with another man named Stevie. Chris is taken aback. 21 days later, it's Sarah's birthday. Dawn gives her a cake and a red dress, insisting she wear it and asking what she wants. When she asks for freedom, he says it's too soon. She then requests a TV, but he tells her she must earn it. When she asks for a clock, he agrees. However, when she calls him dad, he demands she call him Dawn instead. He then gets closer, and it seems he assaults her again. On day 38, Sarah plans to kill Dawn with a can lid weapon she made. Dressed in the red dress, she attacks him, but he easily overpowers her and assaults her again. Fast forward today, 354, Sarah appears to be pregnant with her father's child and uses a nursing book to prepare for the baby. She suddenly goes into severe pain and gives birth alone, naming the girl Marie. Four years later, Sarah is pregnant again while raising Marie. Dawn visits, bringing basic supplies like a table and mattress. Sarah seems more at ease and even offers him tea. Dawn shares that he got a promotion and will have a new office. Marie calls him dad 
and proudly shows him a drawing she made. Dawn appears happy and goes upstairs for dinner. During the meal, Rini argues with him, insisting that he should hire a private investigator since he hasn't made a real effort to find Sarah. Dawn counters that they've already spent over $5,000 in Florida and refuses to spend more. He tells her to move on, then screams, breaks some plates, and leaves. Later, he gifts Sarah and Marie a TV for Christmas, making Sarah very happy. In year seven, Sarah has given birth to a son named Michael, and the family is living in the basement. Marie appears to be ill and is struggling to breathe. Dawn offers some pills, but Sarah objects, stating they are not appropriate for children and that she is unsure of the correct dosage. She insists that Marie requires medical attention, but Dawn simply walks away without addressing her concerns. The following day, Chris meets with Amy and tells her that he is still searching for Sarah. He shares the misleading information he received from Dawn, which claims that Sarah ran away with Stevie. Amy opens up about her own situation, revealing that her father has been abusive toward her mother and expressing her belief that he may have harmed her sister. Later that day, Amy confronts Dawn, accusing him of having harmed Sarah. Rini expresses her desire to hire a private investigator, which infuriates Dawn. This leads to a heated argument, during which he drops the keys to the basement. Amy seizes the opportunity to pick them up and sneaks into the basement, but she is soon caught by a hostile Dawn. Meanwhile, Sarah is in the basement, playing with her children. As time goes by, Sarah gives birth to her third child, a boy she names Thomas. She tells Dawn that there isn't enough space for a third child in their living situation and persuades him to allow Rini to raise the baby instead. Dawn agrees to Rini's request, and the next day, he leaves the baby on the doorstep with a note from Sarah asking Rini to care for him. When Rini finds the baby and the note, she is deeply moved and takes the child inside, but she misses a smaller note from Sarah. Dawn discovers this smaller note first and storms into the basement, taking out his anger on Sarah before leaving. Fast forward to year 14. Both Murray and Michael have grown up, and Dawn now targets teenage Murray. Sarah begs him to leave her alone, reminding him that she is still a child. The children have developed social anxiety from their confinement and do not fully grasp the seriousness of their situation. 17 years later, on a rainy day, Rini spends time with her grandson Thomas. Sarah learns she is pregnant again, and they soon notice a leak in the ceiling. They begin to dig their way out with a spoon, and Sarah works all night, eventually creating a hole that leads to the front yard. She shines a light to signal for help from a neighbor, who sees it and goes to inform Dawn. Dawn, however, dismisses the neighbor's concerns and violently attacks Sarah when he returns, causing her to miscarry. After 18 years in captivity, Dawn informs Sarah that her son Thomas is living just above them. He tells her that Thomas is growing strong and wants to play football next year, in addition to baseball. Michael expresses his desire to play baseball as well, but Dawn manipulates the situation, turning Murray and Michael against Sarah. Later, the children demand to be let out, and overwhelmed, Sarah collapses in tears, reminiscing about her boyfriend Christopher and the love he showed her. The kids realize their mistakes and begin to clean up. When Sarah regains consciousness, she reveals the truth about Dawn, explaining that Rini is her mother and Dawn's wife, making her his daughter. The children are understandably shocked, especially since Murray, who has asthma, struggles to breathe in the confined space. In their 19th year of captivity, Dawn confronts Sarah about food rationing. Michael becomes furious and tries to confront Dawn, only to provoke him further. Dawn taunts Michael, reminding him that while Thomas is younger, he is bigger and stronger. Above ground, Dawn is struggling. He frequently argues with his wife, has lost his job, and is facing foreclosure on their house. Frustrated with taking care of Sarah and the kids, he contemplates harming them while they sleep by funneling carbon monoxide into the basement's air vents. However, when Thomas catches him in the garage, Dawn lies and says he's just checking the car. After Thomas leaves, Dawn hesitates and decides not to go through with his plan. 20 years into captivity, Murray suffers a severe asthma attack and needs medical attention. Sarah pleads with Dawn to take them to the hospital, but he initially refuses. When she calls him dad, he changes his mind and agrees to take Murray, but only allows Sarah to accompany him, leaving Michael behind. Once upstairs, Sarah has an emotional breakdown, but quickly composes herself to rush Murray to the ER. 
mirroring a scene from the beginning of the film. The doctors manage to save Murray, but a concerned doctor asks about his medical history and hands Dawn a form to fill out. Sarah tries to go to the bathroom, but Dawn refuses permission. Instead, she spills water on his paperwork and seizes the chance to seek help, telling the doctor everything. As a result, Dawn is arrested and sentenced to life in prison. Michael is also rescued from the basement, and Rinny is horrified to learn the truth about what happened to her daughter at the hands of her husband. The family decides to live together. Chris arrives and gives Sarah the pink helmet he promised her years ago. They reminisce about their teenage dreams for the future. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.